Hello, everybody. How are you, how are you doing today at the Wednesday of KubeCon, uh, towards the evening? Um, so my name is uh, David Baldwin, and I'm going to do a uh, maintainer update on the cloud events discovery and a little bit about X registry. And so this will be about 25 minutes or so. And if we have any questions, I'm happy to take them at the end, and we can go into more detail, including uh, um, maybe a demo, if time permits, or uh, depending on what the questions are. So just a quick background of myself, um, just from an introduction perspective. Um, I've, I've been in product management for well over, uh, well over 12 years, uh, working at different uh, SaaS-based companies, VMware, Splunk, um, and a lot of work I've done there has actually been, been related to doing integrations. Hundreds of integrations, which is kind of how I fell upon cloud events and, and, and the serverless working group, trying to find easier ways for me to be able to go through and do integrations and be able to consume data. Um, I've also a nine-time um, KubeCon, KubeCon attendee. I started in 2015, if anybody was there in San Francisco, so heavily involved in terms of the growth of uh, the cloud native community in terms of where it's been going. So from an agenda perspective, we're gonna break it down into a couple different segments, a little bit of a background in terms of the current state, where the cloud events came from, where they're going. Um, also doing an introduction to discovery, uh, this will branch out into the topic of where the events and attributes, which is kind of where the X registry part will come into place. Then I'm going to talk a little bit, just a quick update on the developer resources. I'm going to point those out because a huge amount of work has been done, especially over the last year regarding updating the, the tooling that's necessary for developers to be able to integrate cloud events. Then we're going to tap into a little bit about going forward in terms of what we're asking for in terms of the help from the community perspective. Now, from a timeline perspective, uh, we can go back to 2017. This is the serverless working group um, started, uh, started a new specification in terms of trying to build out a way to easy, make it easier to be able to consume, consume events. And so from there, they started to create what was called the, the, uh, the cloud event specification. Uh, and this continued to grow over time. In 2018, uh, uh, the sandbox, uh, the project was converted into a sandbox. Uh, 2019, it moved into incubation, and at the same time as incubation is when we actually released the, the 1.0 specification. Uh, this was a great milestone in terms of all the work that's been done over uh, several different years, but at the same time, it was also the realization that the community made a decision to change the path in terms of actually how they were going forward and to focus more upon the event discovery as well as the subscriptions. And then since then, there's been a significant amount of work that's been done, a huge amount of work that's been done, especially in the last year, year and a half. There's a huge amount of improvements to adding additional bindings uh, to the specification, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, uh, about two-thirds of the way through, we'll talk about the other uh, uh, bindings and formats that have been published. Uh, but there's also been a huge amount of SDK work. I talked about that a little bit just in the beginning in terms of part of the agenda. And recently, we've actually introduced new specifications that are related to the registry uh, aspect of that and subscription. And there's been some supporting documentation that's, that's happened recently as well. Pagination as well as the cloud events, uh, um, the cloud events uh, SQL, which will be very useful in terms of creating cloud event filters. And finally, this is actually something that happened a little bit earlier in the year, but we're making more progress on that is that a PR was actually submitted towards uh, graduation. So as the group has been, been maturing over the few years, uh, it was prudent for us to go through and actually do the PR associated with that. So uh, a big step forward, we're not there yet. A PR's been submitted, but um, um, it's a step forward in terms of uh, our maturity as a group. So breaking down, uh, the next step is actually to talk a little bit about discovery. And this is an extension of some of the talks that were done uh, beforehand on the topic as well. But we break discovery down really into three different areas, the event registry, uh, the schema, as well as the endpoint. And so for the first part is uh, what context are the events used in? Are they used as part of a product uh, or maybe perhaps as part of a service? Uh, uh, what are the events discoverable for me to consume uh, from an end user perspective, uh, either with automation and tooling, for example? Uh, the next one we want to understand from a schema perspective is that what re really is included in the payload? What does the payload look like? And this is where the schema actually does come in, and this can be used from different use cases uh, outside of cloud events. It can be used for code generation, uh, validation purposes as well, and also to discover if there's been any behavioral changes with the events and the content that's actually been included with that. 
And then finally, there will be details on what, event, what, um, what endpoints are available to consume and produce events, which falls under the endpoint registry. So these will be three specifications that I'll call out again a little bit later as part of the X registry uh, documents. So going back to the first part of that, that, that the first part is the event definitions themselves. Um, so sorry, let me go back one second. Um, so going, going back to the event de de definitions themselves, the, the event definitions we can see as being summarized basically as a group. And I used the context of a product or a service earlier, um, and coming from previous experience, these could be security events, they could be really any, any context that can serve any purpose. Uh, the user community comes up with new use cases all the time. We get uh, people coming in, uh, asking about how they can contribute, add new, t new, new, new different types as well, new, new use cases. Uh, in the sample event that was provided, uh, there is a format that's actually defined as cloud events. Now, there are also other standard messaging formats that can also be used outside of cloud events. Uh, some of those are actually listed to the side, side there. Um, what I've done, and I've actually done this in a couple different places throughout the presentation, is add additional links to, the, to these as well. So you can use it as a reference to go back and click on and see as well. But on the surface, you see some of those as a MQP, uh, MQTT, and HTTP, for example. Now, the cloud event uh, contracts, as we go into the, the attributes themselves, the cloud event contracts are defined by basically their attributes. The cloud event specification defines the required attributes and the optional attributes that can be used. Um, there's also some flexibility as well as is that um, you as the, the person actually producing the, uh, uh, producing the events can also indicate that some of the optional ones can be required as well. Uh, but there are options to use the, uh, the custom defined attributes specific to the event, the cervix, the product, et cetera, and you can define these uh, through the list. Now, the schema registry also uses the, the, the concept of groups, where the, and the, this is basically where the documents can be stored. Uh, there is no specific language that is required uh, with, with this particular context, uh, but there are some examples we've already written in, such as that, that cover JSON, XML, and others are being developed and, uh, um, and added, to, added to the uh, specifications and documentation. And as with the majority of the specifications that we provide, um, this is actually even more so now the case with the registry, which um, there is, um, we provide guides and even, even more flexibility, uh, flexibility where possible. Now, outside of the event definitions, there is also support uh, for multiple versions of the schema in parallel. Uh, within the registry specification itself, there's a couple other examples in terms of how this gets broken down and actually how to be able to consume that. And if we have time, uh, if there's questions on it, I can go back to that. Now, the, uh, the last part of those uh, the group of three was focused upon the endpoints. And the endpoints are extension of the definition group, so we're going back to the group topic, where they can uh, add additional data points, such as configuration data for protocol settings. Uh, they can also leverage the definition groups for use of these already defined uh, events. So this is a big win. Uh, there could be hundreds, thousands, even more uh, endpoints, uh, and by the, having the ability to refer, refer to predefined events, especially in very complex architecture, this can uh, really make it much more efficient uh, for you to be able to deploy these cloud events. And there are, there's, there's another example of another attribute that we'll cover a little bit later. Uh, a little bit later uh, in this presentation uh, as an example. So now uh, this is a basic concept, but um, we're going to uh, cover the consumer, uh, the producer, um, as well as the subscriber endpoints just to talk a little bit in terms about how they operate in terms of where they're going. And starting on the left, um, starting with the consumer and pull model, um, uh, there the consumer wants to consume the events. It's going to initiate the connection to the consumer endpoint. Uh, this uh, hopefully is straightforward from that perspective. Now, uh, once that's actually initiated, the events will start to flow to the consumer. Um, some examples of this would include uh, a pub sub, for example, uh, or an HTTP get. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have another model, which would be uh, a push-based model. Uh, so in that case, uh, the, the events are being sent from the producer to the consumer itself. And examples here would be AMQP. Uh, webhooks, and um, there are some examples of documentation about this within our, uh, within our repos as well. 
Now, just to build upon the previous slide a little bit, uh, there are subscriber endpoints are used to create the endpoint subscription. This can be part of a, a single event or really a set of events as well uh, that, could, that would be uh, sent to the producer endpoint. Uh, so this was something from at least my other experiences would, would be very, very useful from a data ingestion perspective. Um, web hooks are an example of this, um, as I mentioned a little bit beforehand on the previous slide. And one of the attributes that um, I didn't cover, but we're gonna just talk about it a little bit more from this perspective, is that the channel was mentioned earlier uh, as, an event, as the event point, excuse me, the endpoint definition. Uh, it was primarily used to correlate endpoints which actually uh, belong uh, in the same channel. So an example here would be a queuing system where the, the channel would uh, allow the producer and the consumer events to be easily correlated. And so you have just an example here where we cut out those two different segments and showed how the channel uh, and as well as the, um, uh, the producer and consumer and says they can be mapped later on. Now, what do all these, uh, what do all these registries have in common? Uh, they have this uh, hierarchical structure that works together through a, through a, common, through a common core. Um, and this is also, again, repeated in the X registry. Uh, X registry. And what that common core uh, is that there are groups of metadata defined within the specification itself. And there's also a standard set of APIs to be able to access them. Uh, and this is actually uh, increasing as we go through uh, and have uh, additional conversations associated with that. And where that branches into is, uh, we're, we're going to jump into what's called the X registry repo. So there's two repos that are actually involved. This part of Cloud Events is the Cloud Events repo, and there's also the X registry repo itself. And this is where these draft specifications were put, pushed out uh, a little bit earlier this year. And now the X registry allows for more than just cloud events, but also arbitrary message format, uh, a place to store schemas uh, that can be uh, easily extended to use with other resources. So this is something that was, uh, has been asked for from the use cases is that we need to be, be a lot more flexible in terms of uh, how we use our events and how we uh, uh, define how we end up using them. Uh, but the, uh, um, so hence the name, the um, extensible registry, X registry. Now we still have the core of cloud events as a whole, but this is much more extensible as I mentioned. So the new discovery specifications that will be created, uh, some of these will be moved and expanded in this repo. Uh, so as we go forward and uh, create new specifications, you'll start to see them in here as well. Which uh, brings me to this particular slide, and I mentioned I was gonna cover this a little bit earlier. So we have two different pieces in terms of what's being built out. Um, on the left-hand side, you have the new X registry repo in terms of what's being put into that. Um, there is the, the core specification for X registry, and then you see the endpoint schema and the message definition uh, registries as well. Um, all these are currently at uh, 0.5 version, so they've been slowly been in increasing over time uh, and making good progress from that perspective. So I definitely recommend if you have a chance to go in and take a look at it um, and see if you have any feedback that might meet your use cases. The, the pagination and the subscription were a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit later to be added. Uh, it was a realization that uh, these were the types of specifications and documents we would need after uh, starting to work with uh, the different types of um, data coming in from XHistory. And so they're actually gonna be at um, 0 0.1. Uh, there, so I'm gonna cover it a little bit later, but there is also a primer, both for cloud events as well as the X registry. Uh, I personally find the primer to be very, very useful, especially for people that are just getting used to or getting uh, exposed to cloud events. Uh, the cloud events primer is a great place to, to jump off from and, uh, and get exposed to in terms of actually how it works. The X registry primer is still, still new um, and it needs to be expanded from that perspective. But it is something that I do recommend taking a look at and, and, and keeping aware in terms of actually how that's being moved, moving forward. Now off to the right, you see the, uh, the, um, all the different documents associated with cloud events. And some of these are new, uh, new within the, the, the most recent year and I'll be talk, talking about them as part of the update. Uh, you have the core cloud event spec, and then you have all the different uh, additional domain-specific documents. Uh, the, and these are docs for bindings, such as AMQP, Kafka, HTTP. Uh, there's also the event formats that are listed there as well, uh, such as Avro, JSON, Protobuf, and there's other ones as well. And then the new docs 
The additional docs that are available uh, includes the SDKs, uh, the supported features, uh, as well, and also the new ones for a subscription, and the Cloud Events SQL are all listed there to the right. Now, um, in terms of some of the recommendations in terms of how to work with cloud events, and I mentioned the primer as a way to get started, but it's very easy to you know, start small and build out from there. And these are some of the same approaches we took when cloud events first got started. Uh, started small, started building upon that, and made ad make adjustments as we learned more about the use cases and what the community actually needs. Uh, you, as a, a user, uh, are able to take all these different discovery objects themselves and use them within your own source code. Um, you can include the, the schema inside your, uh, your event definitions and the event definitions inside the endpoint. Um, another op option, uh, if you're interested, is to build automation and deployment tooling. Uh, and that would basically create the endpoint definition on the fly from code when there's what's actually being deployed. This is one aspect associated with that. And then you're able to link that to any static definitions and reuse them within your project or your projects within your environment. Uh, another option, if you wanna go even more advanced, and this is something to, um, uh, that we are exploring, especially from a use case perspective, because um, people within our own group as well as customer, customers, uh, other community members have actually asked for this as well, uh, is, taking, is looking at the concepts of a centralized registry, for example, where you would have centralized schemas uh, and as well as governance associated with that. Another way of actually thinking about it is uh, interop between organizations, uh, between your own internal organizations, or maybe within partnerships, different partnerships in the organization as well, and customers as well. Uh, another take that uh, would be an option is uh, a federated use case. And this would be a situation where you might have different services that need to discover each other and sync between each other as well. And so these are all different use cases where we're trying to expand upon. Definitely looking for some other uh, suggestions that uh, you may have and would be willing to be able to uh, contribute and provide to us as well. Now, um, where we are, and I've, some of these things I've mentioned multiple times, is that uh, everything we're doing is a work in progress, but we're very, very active. Uh, the, the community has been providing lots of, lots of content and um, lots of feedback. We do meet every uh, Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 central. Um, and so we have a standing meeting that's very active and very engaging from a dialogue perspective. Uh, but there are still some areas that we need uh, additional input on, and we're looking from feedback from people such as you, are additional use cases. Um, we're also looking at people to come in and provide different perspectives as well in terms of challenges they have in terms of consuming events and, uh, and working with those and subscribing to events. Uh, new ideas, uh, such as those that came up in terms of being able to add the discovery specifications, um, is a way to be able to change how we do business, to do business, um, sorry, um, I'm thinking about work, um, uh, but, but in terms of uh, how we uh, operate as a community. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have submitted uh, cloud events uh, PR for graduation and any assistance towards that uh, can be useful as well. Now, there are some ch other challenges that are, uh, are in place um, as we continue to define the, the, the Cloud Events X Registry spec, uh, always looking for ways to get past some of those challenges, but we also wanna be able to increase the standardization across the other CNCF projects and, and external projects for that matter. Um, right now, um, at last count, when I looked at it, we had about 30 different projects that are using Cloud Events, 30 different projects within CNCF are using cloud events, and this is a great start. People are basically using this foundation for helping them manage events. Um, it makes it uh, much more tightly coupled, uh, and now these projects uh, can uh, function uh, from an interop perspective. Much easier for you to be able to go through and actually be able to integrate. There's a couple other areas that were uh, called out from beforehand, and these are actively being uh, worked on, and um, this list will continue to grow. Um, and, and where that actually goes into place is that the uh, enrichment of overloading for uh, event definitions is one area. Uh, the uh, endpoints that uh, generate uh, enriched events, uh, the one that's actually we just put there as an example would be the partition key. And another area that was turned out to be very, very useful uh, with cloud events is when people would go out and uh, publish and 
have publicly available their, their proof, of comp, con, proof of concepts with the implementations. This en enabled uh, new uh, users to come in and see how uh, the cloud events were operating. Uh, this could also be applied to the X registry, which would be very useful. Now, I'm going to tap into um, uh, one aspect is that um, uh, the, the, the cloud events primer itself. And um, the registry one is, as I mentioned, is being developed, but this is a great place to start. Uh, it has the key parts of the specification all in one location. And the concepts such as uh, the structure behind the events as well as the goals and why we did what we did. Uh, the architecture, which includes the model extensions, the event format and coding. Uh, constraints, uh, error handling, and security. And security has been a big topic this KubeCon. Uh, I've seen a lot of conferences where it's been really focused upon um, cloud native security, Kubernetes security. And there's also been a lot of vendors in the showcase as well have been pushing that as well. Uh, versioning, uh, a quick guide to attributes and how to use them, as well as the key protocols and actually how they fit in. Uh, in the end, uh, basically what you'll end up getting out of the primer is a reduce, reduced time to value for your cloud events. Uh, and then X registry as well as it matures, and you'll have a much better journey and overall better eventing experience associated with that. Now, and the last part, uh, at least from this particular se segment, is to talk about the developer experience in terms of where to go with that. Um, so I mentioned several times that the community has been very, very actively involved in terms of improving the SDKs. It's been something that we put a lot of effort into. And so over to the left, you see the different languages that are there. And over to the right, I put a link that uh, basically maps to all the different um, feature support page, which is continually being updated. And I'm gonna share that page here in a second. Um, I'm not gonna exit out because uh, getting back into this particular page was a challenge in terms of setting it up in terms of where to go with that. But I do wanna provide a couple different um, uh, other links and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and we can cover that. Um, two additional areas for to be able to connect with the group in terms of what we're doing. Uh, to the right is a uh, link to the Slack channel for X Registry, uh, and this is uh, this this channel is actually actually uh, is going to be actively available within the CNCF workspace. But we're writing a drink link here, and then off to the left you have the uh, the link that takes you to the uh, the Cloud Events GitHub page. Uh, this would be in addition to the X Registry that was already there. Uh, I am going to share the thank you real fast. Uh, on behalf of myself and the, and the Cloud Events community uh, to allow us to provide this update, but then I'm gonna, I wanna exit out and um, just give an example in terms of um, uh, the other uh, feature support as part of the SDK. And hopefully I do this correctly. Sorry. Uh, got it, cool, thank you. So this is an example of the, the, the feature support that's currently available within the cloud events. And um, we spent some time over I want to say the last three weeks or so going through and uh, updating a lot of the, the SDKs in terms of content was in there as well as feature support itself. Um, so some of them are gonna be very specific towards uh, the, uh, the, uh, the end users and the companies who are helping support certain SDKs and feature sets, but um, it's a great example in terms of all the different areas in terms of what you're able to do from the SDK perspective. Yes, there are a lot of Xs, but a lot of these are being knocked off and there is a, still a significant amount of overall adoption and the ability for you to be able to use cloud events. Uh, I'm going to pause. Um, that was about 25 minutes. I'm able to pause and see if there's any questions. Yeah.
So, um, so I believe, so Knative, so of the projects that are currently used, Knative um, is one of them that's starting to be able to do the integration. Argo is another one, Flux is another. Um, but there typically is coordination or there is somebody from their project will come over and actually be able to ask questions. But they can use it independently as well. Uh, are they going to end up using it completely at some point? Uh, it's a great question. I can go back and, and figure that out. Um, we are doing, so for, for example, um, uh, there have been discussions that we've been having uh, trying to see how we can better pair up, for example, with uh, open telemetry, for example. Uh, and that's actively ongoing. It hasn't been finalized, and there's still work that needs to be done from a PR perspective. But those are type, 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 types of uh, active discussions. In the case of Knative, um, uh, there, I can check to see who is, is who's actually alignment with that. Uh, but typically, there's, there, there's a person who's actually attached to each one of those projects and is actually working on that. I'll be happy to, to show you actually how to, get, how to, how to, how to be able to uh, contribute or ask questions associated with that. Um, so we actually have a meeting tomorrow, tomorrow morning, uh, that, uh, again, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, 12 Eastern, and we can ask those questions in terms of where we'd be able to go with that. There is a separate governance uh, documents in terms of if you do want to contribute or if you do want to be able to take what you have and bring it in or if you want feedback in terms of what you're doing. Uh, there's been other companies that have done that in terms of vendors, but there's also been uh, other consumers as well that just want to be able to bring it into their environment uh, that have contributed as well. And so... Okay. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, was, I think there's another question. I actually might walk over because my hearing's bad, if you don't mind. Oh, there's a mic. So sorry, I'm new to this, but uh, it seems like you guys are def uh, mostly defining like the endpoints and the schemas, messages, these kinds of things. And I'm looking at some of the event-driven architecture stuff that we've worked with, and it seems like it's a natural fit, except that maybe it doesn't support some of the uh, cooperative features like replay, things like that. Have you guys considered the suitability for this for um, event-driven architectures? Or have you looked at like the async, async API that seems to be feeding into that as well? So topics such as re replay, which you, you just mentioned, that was brought up, uh, I don't know what the final resolution with that was be. That was brought up about a month ago in terms of one of the calls. Uh, I don't know what the final uh, execution was in terms of how they were going to adopt it or how they were going to take feedback on that. Okay. Uh, I do recall that actually being, I want to say, uh, early October, late September was one of the calls in terms of when, when, it, was, when it was brought up. Okay. Uh, but I can, Are, I can get your name and go back and look at that. And, sure, sure. And try to give an intro for that. Yeah, I'll come up at the end here. But this looks like an 80% overlap with the kind of technology contracts, things they're looking for, especially for inter-organizational cooperation mm -hmm. and your uh, cross-organizational registries, things like that would be fantastic. But right. I don't it, know. it was something that's similar to that when I was doing a significant amount of integrations, for example, I mean, we just started, it was something that I, I wish I had you know, beforehand. Yeah. Um, you can still do both at the same time. Um, so there are examples where you keep your old way of actually doing events and you, you start to implement cloud events for the new ones as they come, in th come forward. That can be a little bit challenged sometimes architecturally, and it can be expensive to some degree um, in terms of trying to manage two different solutions at the yeah. same time. Uh, but that, that is one way to start a progress in terms of being able to change things over. Okay. And then quickly, is there a, even a, a beta product or something that somebody has produced open source that is a registry that we could begin to use today? Or is it still in definition stages? So we have our X registry, which is in the definition stages. Um, one of the, uh, the key maintainers who's done a lot of work, especially with uh, EventGrid, has a, 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 has a proof of concept he's actually put out in place already. Okay. Uh, that was... I want to say that was shared in June timeframe. Uh, that would be available to be able to, you, can be able, you should be able to see that uh, either on a video or you'd be able to download that uh, and be able to use it from that perspective. Okay, thanks. What is the oh, um, uh, the, the person actually um, did a POC, uh, um, I want to say in the, in the June timeframe. So one of the items that we actually had in our list is just, we have a POC that's already in place. 
uh, we're always doing additional development to show ways of doing different implementations. Uh, and this was one I think that was done in the June timeframe, and I thought it was done with event, also done with event grid in terms of an integration, but um, that was just an example. So, so, so I'll just use um, Event Grid as an example. Um, so they have two different ways. I think this is still the case. I shouldn't probably speak for Microsoft, but it's, uh, I think this is actually still the case where they have two different ways to be able to consume the event. You can use cloud events, uh, as you typically would be, and they have a separate option that actually has a wrapper associated with that. Um, and so you have both options available depending on how the implementation actually is. Uh, AWS, I would have to go back and um, read about where they're currently at in terms of actually how they offer uh, the ability to be able to consume events. Typically with Event Hub, for example, that's gonna be a streaming service, so it's a little bit different in terms of actually how it operates, but um, we can take a look at it and I can give you some more feedback. Uh, so there, there was, there's, there's, um, are you talking about, so I talked about um, one of the options for uh, the event types themselves was to uh, make them required versus optional. That was one aspect associated with that. Um, is, overriding as well. Overriding. I don't recall my, my actually just directly talking about the overriding part. Uh, what about Uh, so the, it, it's, it's still focused on the events themselves. The X registry also, um, the, dis the, the discovery part of X registry is really unique in, in that it's, um, uh, the specification enables anybody to go through and actually be able to publish and consume events under a, a general specification themselves. You don't have to use cloud events per se. Um, you can have a, another mechanism to be able to go through and do that. You can still use the discovery specification itself to be able to go through and discover all the different event types and what the schema is like and then figure out what you actually want to be able to consume there as well. Um, I'm not sure I'm answering yeah, your question. Thanks. Okay. All right, but I, I can take the notes that um, I think those three people actually that needed a follow up, I can write that down and, uh, uh, and, and reach out to you after this. Uh, event typing, and so the, um, are, you, are you interested about the type of data? So you can still create a hierarchy of events and all the different attributes associated with that. The data itself that's actually inside of that, we're not gonna modify, but you can still go through and classify the metadata and actually have that um, set as needed. So you can define that as necessary. We got time for one more question here. I have two questions. Um, we use open API for defining our REST interfaces. That has been the standard, like, open API for REST interfaces. When I look for um, async messages or async events, right, I see two things when I go and search. One is the async API, and I also look at the cloud events. So is cloud events going to be the standard for defining your event structure? It, so... Uh, I may have mentioned this a little bit earlier. You can have more than one, uh, more than one methodology in terms of how you, how you actually want to define your event structure, your event structure itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we are trying to push the cloud events uh, methodology just because it makes it much easier uh, for people to be able to integrate and less hurdles associated with that. Uh, and will there be tool, tools provided along with the cloud events? Like for example, we generate auto code, we generate the code based upon open API definition, mm -hmm. right? That's how we share our open API with the external vendors and they create the clients based on the open API. Mm -hmm. open it. So um, does cloud events also will be providing those kind of tools where it can generate the consumers or the producers based on the definition of the 
So we provide the specification in terms of uh, how you should write that. Um, What's the message format going to be and what, what, what message queue or what channel or the topic you're going to consume from? Right. So if any, provide that definition. Uh, right? In terms of? Will I mean, there be tools provided to kind of generate so, those? So typ typically the working group doesn't necessarily provide tools. We, okay. we provide proof of concepts. Uh, I mentioned that a little bit earlier in terms of how to potentially be able to use that, but it may not be the exact uh, scenario that you're actually looking for. Um, okay. I can take your information and we can go back and have a discussion in terms of what you may need from that. Okay. Um, one other question. Um, the One other requirement we generally tend to do is like backward forward compatibility of the messages. Right. right? I did see in your I, uh, I mentioned versioning. format uh, ver required, yeah, required right. kind of, but does it also support the compatibility where some fields are optional? And I can do a test when I rev up my version, whether it's compatible with backward or forward, those compatibility, data compatibility or format compatibility. So there, there can be data compatibility, uh, at least from a specification perspective. Um, mm -hmm. when it, if it's required as you're switching between versions, that'll be more of a challenge. Um, but from an, from an optionality perspective, you do have the flexibility associated with that. There is, excuse me, we have, um, I would have to go back and look at the error handling aspects in terms of, uh, because some of that has, has actually changed a little bit in terms of clarifying actually how we handle the errors in terms of if you run into the scenario, what will end up happening? Do we give you a null back? Do we give you an error back? Mm -hmm. What are the conditions associated with that? So there's been some tweaks we've made recently that I would have to go back and check. Okay, thank you. Thank you, but I'll, I can take your information and I can go back and be more specific. Okay, thank you.